So today I'm going to check the amperage and voltage draws on my Bravo S Maytag wash machine. And the goal here is to see if we can run this on an inverter uh, or a generator during a power outage. And this here um, wash machine uh, obviously has a hot water and a cold water coming into it. And from what I understand, some of these washers have a heating element that heats up the hot water, uh, which could use an additional wattage if that's the case. And I'll have to look up my model online to see if it does that. But anyway, um, I have some other standard hookups that you've seen in my past video. Um, I have a clamp on amp meter that we're going to capture the inrush amperage. And I also have a kilowatt, which could be found really almost anywhere nowadays. And what the kilowatts do is they capture voltage, uh, wattage, amperage, and kilowatt hours, which will really tell you how much energy your device uses uh, over a cycle. So um, you can see we're on kilowatt uh, zero because I just plugged it in, kilowatt hour zero. Uh, amperage is using very a very small draw. Uh, there's the hertz and there's the watts. But if you notice, it's using one watt. Right, and that is because it's probably powering this um, control panel up here. So uh, over here, it's going to move around no matter where I put it once the washing machine starts. But uh, we're going to get make sure we get the capture of the inrush. Now, why the inrush? Well, because the wash machine has a motor in it, obviously, to turn the uh, the tub. So let's start it up. So we're going to hit the power button, and I've got it on a bulky cycle. You can look, it's warm, it's medium, it's low, it's typically what I use. And we're going to go over here to the clamp on meter, and we're just going to turn the inrush on. So the inrush is now on, and we're going to go ahead and start and see what happens. I don't suspect the inrush to come on right away. I think it's not going to go on until the motor starts. So I think it's got to fill up with water first. So let's just look at the over here at the wattage. So right now we're at four watts, and you can kind of hear the wash machine starting up. Okay, so we just caught a 3.1 on that motor startup, which is very low. So what it did was the tub started to spin. We're just going to reset it just to see if we can, uh, if that's the same every time it spins. Okay, that was a little higher. 8.7, that's good. It actually spun a little longer. So let's give it, uh, it's going to do this a couple times. Let's get some kind of sensing feature. So the highest so far I saw was 8.7. So I think it spins around a few times. I don't know if it's trying to figure out the weight of that or what it is, but okay. So we got 8.7 again, which is pretty consistent. It spun a little longer that time. I'm just going to reset it again. Yeah, nothing on the wattage here, 1.4. So it'll do this for a few times, and then what'll happen is uh, the water will start to go in. So that might be the highest we captured, which is good. So if that's the case, we'd take 8.7 and times that by 120, and then we would know um, the approximate inrush needed. Okay, so there goes the water kicking on. So you can see it's filling up. The inrush is still at nothing this time because the motor didn't spin and we're using six watts over here so again the only thing happening right now is it's filling up still there's a lot of water on this cycle and that's one downfall to it a lot of water so again you can still see Nothing, 
still using our three watts, I'm sorry, our six watts. And that pole's gotta be close to full, right? That tub's gotta be close to full with this one. So, let me just pull back a little bit here and show you the setup. The battery is low, so I, this video may cut off. All right, so I think it's gonna start doing something now. So, whoops. Of course, the meter shut off. Let's get the meter back on. Okay, inrush is back on. Oh, good, we caught that. So we got 8.2. I've got it just in time. So, well, that's the um, wash cycle. So it's, it's the agitator, I guess they call it. And it's going to agitate for a while, and then there's the spin cycle. So I really would like to catch the spin cycle as well. That way we can see if that amperage goes any higher. So this is a pretty consistent number. We had 8.7, 8.7, and this time it was 8.2. So uh, pretty consistent. Back on the wattage, we definitely jumped up now that motor is actually working. So we're at 239, 362. And again, I think that's a variable speed motor uh, in there, so it's going to fluctuate uh, as it starts, stops, spins, and you can see though it's consistent, well that's a little higher, 400 watt rating, but, and one thing you have to know is because it's connected to its standard uh, 120 volt outlet there, it looks like a 15 amp outlet. It's not really going to exceed 1500 to 1800 watts, so uh, that's one thing. Now, it might surge uh, past those numbers at some point, but so far we haven't seen it. Even at 9 amps uh, times 120 volts, what's that? Maybe give or take 1000 watts, so, uh, and that's a surge. So it appears the running watts right now are going between you know, 300 and maybe 250 to 400. Okay, picked back up here with 16 minutes left, and this is a rinse cycle, I believe. Yeah, looks like we're on the rinse stage, so the motor should start spinning. Uh, I just had to set the inrush and caught a 7.7, .7, which is what we've kind of been seeing. Let's just go look at our wattage. Okay, we're back down to 6.2 because it's not really doing anything other than filling up and the occasional spinning. 7.5, we saw it jump there. Uh, I was waiting for it to really start spinning. Oh my god, I think it's, I think they're wet enough to rinse. <laughs> what a wasteful cycle, huh? With all that water. Cut another seven six. Nothing happening here really on the watts. Don't expect much to move on the volts or the amps at this point. Let's look at the kilowatt hours. 0 0.08 kilowatt hours. Not much electricity at this point. It's at 80 watts. Alright. Okay, this time a little faster. There we go. Now we got some good wattage going on here, people. So 847 watts. This sucker's going to start to spin really fast. All right, moving it down. There she goes. So much so that not my uh, okay, five amps. So it's about what I thought. Once the motor gets going, 365 watts in the spin cycle. came on and the motor for the spin. 
I think that explains why those numbers vary from 700 to 500 to 300. This thing seems to be all over the place, huh? I guess the reason why it's lighter now, the 149 watts as opposed to the previous spin, which was 300 some, is the clothes are lighter now, meaning that some a lot of the water's out of them already, so the motor doesn't have to work as hard. Uh, definitely less wattage this time around. Where are we? Okay, so we're at 0.11 on the kilowatt hours. There's only six minutes left, so it's probably going to do this, it's going to drain, and then it's going to do one final one and then shut off, so. Okay, here we are. Cycle is done, and we used a total of 0.12 kilowatt hours. So, if my math's right, that is 120 watts it used for that complete washing of that load of clothes.